Welcome to the Growing Leadership Podcast. What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Growing Leadership Podcast. We are so excited that you guys are here with us today and you came to listen to our podcast. Today, we have Matt Pinnell, the Lieutenant Governor of Oklahoma, and he gives us great insight on productivity in his own leadership and productivity in leadership in general. We do apologize again for any audio issues that occur during this podcast. We are doing the best that we can with Zoom and trying to still get better audio um, for the remainder of the podcast that we have for you guys this year. So, without further ado, here is the Growing Leadership Podcast. We hope you like it. All right, guys, welcome back to the Growing Leadership Podcast. Today we have Matt Pinnell with us. Matt Pinnell is a 17th Lieutenant Governor of Oklahoma, and he serves as Secretary of Tourism and Branding on Governor Stitt's Cabinet. In his role as the Secretary of Tourism and Branding, Matt Pinnell led the successful effort to rebrand Oklahoma. Matt Pinnell is a graduate of Oral Roberts University and lives in Tulsa with his wife and four children who attend Jinx Public Schools. Hello, Matt. How are you today? Good. How are you, Macy? Thank you. Great. All right, let's get started with our first question, um, just to get to know you more, what are some of the first things that got you interested in leadership? Yeah, things that got me interested in leadership. Uh, I, I mean, really, in, in high school, um, I, I was the student council president, actually, at Metro Christian Academy uh, my senior year. Uh, but I had teachers. I mean, I had teachers uh, that, that saw something in me uh, that really kind of pushed me to student council when I was in high school. Um, that, that really helped develop some leadership skills in me. So, I mean, thankfully, I had some teachers. And, and, you know, I know a lot of people can share those same stories that, you know, a lot of times it tracks back to a teacher. Uh, the, you know, the teachers really help run the world. And uh, when, when they see something in a student uh, and they help kind of uh, highlight it and, and uh, develop those skills, um, then, you know, you can really create some world changers. So, for me, it was, it was really teachers. I, I was a people person. I love being around people. Uh, I did um, uh, was involved in a lot of uh, drama classes kind of early on in, my, uh, in middle school and high school. Uh, and I guess a combination of those things, again, uh, I had some teachers, again, say to me, hey, student council, you should really think about that route. And uh, that, that's a, that, w- that was kind of my introduction to leadership. That's awesome. Yeah, teachers definitely are a godsend because I, that's how I kind of got started too is um, teachers encouraged me to do things and step out of my com- comfort zone. Yeah, so you en- said encouragement you- encouragement's the, is the right word there. I oh, mean, you know, yeah. When teachers, en- when they encourage something in students uh, and, and students look up to those teachers, then uh, you you, you can really get somewhere really quick. So yeah, yeah encouragement is really the, great, the, the right word. Yeah, that's good. Um, so you said that you started in high school with your leadership journey. So how did you continue to develop it, even develop it, even when you went into college? You know, uh, internships for me is such a it is something that I talk to high school students um, about as they start entering into college uh, years. You, know, you can get so busy in college. Once you get there, it's a little overwhelming to start with. Uh, that sometimes you can pause or lose momentum on some of those leadership skills or things that you are passionate about. Uh, and for me, you know, I really I love politics, and I I interned with a lot of local elected officials, and I worked on a lot of campaigns, uh, which essentially was an internship for me. Uh, that really was was uh, very valuable. So, you know, d- continuing to sharpen your leadership skills, for me, internships are huge. And, and I really tell, again, really encourage high school students to be already putting a plan in place 
for looking for internships as you start preparing for college. Again, college is gonna be overwhelming uh, to, to start with. So don't take your eye off the ball when it comes to continuing to sharpen some of those leadership skills. Yeah, that's good. Really, internships are great and they really help too. It helps you like prepare. I think it helps you prepare for the like real world too. Yes. Instead of just coming out of college and being like, I've never had a real job before. So right. That's yeah, so- well, that's a great point. It, it's kind of, it, it gives you a little taste of what is coming. You know, you can get yeah. your feet wet, so to speak, uh, with an internship. Yeah, for sure. So what motivated you to be the Lieutenant Governor of Oklahoma? You know, I, I researched it quite a bit. I, I didn't run for lieutenant governor just to run for something. It, it really fit my background. I have a sales and marketing background. And uh, the, the lieutenant governor in Oklahoma, I firmly believe, is kind of the sales and marketing director for the state. Uh, so, I, and again, I, I, that's why I, I feel like in a lot of ways this is my dream job uh, in politics is, is being the sales and marketing director for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, with again my background in sales, so I, again I think it's a it's a good lesson that if you're if you're running for a political office just to run for something and you're not passionate about that position, you're going to lose your direction really fast. Um, but I ran for lieutenant governor to really be lieutenant governor. Most people just run for lieutenant governor to then run for something else, usually governor. Uh, you know, that in a lot of ways it wasn't a stepping stone for me. It was really a job that I love doing every day. But it's because I'm passionate about the things that the lieutenant governor's in charge of. That's awesome. That's really comforting to know that, like, you are passionate about it and you didn't just run to say, I'm the lieutenant governor of Oklahoma mm-hmm. um, or something like that. Because I know some people do, but it's nice to know that you're actually passionate about what you do as lieutenant governor. That's right. That's right. So, what is one of your favorite memories of being lieutenant governor? Wow. Well, I mean, I think at the top of the list certainly would be being sworn into office on the the, the steps of the state capitol. Uh, you know, that was it, we, we you campaign so hard to get elected, and then once you're there, and then you know to stand on at the cap on the capitol steps, you know, laying your hand on a Bible and and uh, uh, you know reading, you know, saying the oath of office is very uh, very powerful uh, and kind of hits you that hey, this is we're not messing around anymore. This is the real deal. Uh, that, that I will never forget that experience. Um, and, and then, you know, we have 77 counties in Oklahoma. And so traveling around the state, you know, looking at all, again, the, the different amazing uh, uh, ecosystems that we have, uh, how different different parts of our state are, that has been uh, really fun. Um, but, but really eye-opening as well is something that we should be promoting a whole lot more. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like... Uh you finally met your goal that you've been wanting for for so long. Um, and that's what I know. I kind of had that when I um, was elected as a vice pre- the state vice president for the OESC, because I'd been wanting to do this since my freshman year. year. And so I was really like, whenever I got sworn in, um, it's obviously not on a, as large of scale as lieutenant governor, but um, for like student council, that's a big thing. And so when I finally yeah. got sworn in, I was like, this is actually happening. Right. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. So I totally get where you're coming from for that. So um, we're the topic of this podcast is productivity. And we thought this would be a good fit for you because obviously you have to juggle a lot of things like your family and your work and like the other things that you have to do. So um, why do you think it's essential um, to have pr- productivity in your leadership? Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you are, again, uh, uh, going down rabbit trails, we, we kind of call them rabbit trails, you know, following something that is not productive down a rabbit trail, uh, well, you're not going to be productive. You're not going to get the things done for, for taxpayers around the state of Oklahoma. And so it really, uh, it, it critically important in my position that, you know, listen, there's 4 million Oklahomans that are depending upon uh, the governor and lieutenant governor doing their job and not taking their eye off the ball. So being productive, you know, I mean, just making a daily, uh, you know, checklist. I still do that on a daily basis of, of what is my to-do list today. Uh, I certainly have a staff that keeps me on track, but we have a very small staff. You know, we don't, we don't have a very large staff uh, in the lieutenant governor's office. So 
it's, it's still very dependent upon me to make sure that I'm being productive, that I'm focused on the things that I actually have authority over too. That's a really key point. Uh, when you get into politics, you may be very passionate about you know, education policy uh, or building a road or a bridge, but I don't have authority over building a road or a bridge in the state. That's the Department of Transportation. Uh, I have authority over our tourism department and rebranding the state, uh, how we're marketing the state of Oklahoma. I have authority over that budget. And so those are the things that I'm, I'm very focused on. Uh, and if I focus on the things that I actually have authority over, I'll be more productive. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, what are some tips that you would give yourself in high school um, on how to be productive? Oh, man. Well, I, again, I, I think it's this it, it, writing, writing things down. Um, it, it slows your mind down to, again, uh, be, be deliberate on what you should be doing for that day or that week. So, you know, if I could go back in time, I'd tell my, my high school stuff a lot of things, but, but one of them to be, again, to be more productive is, is really writing and writing down your goals. I mean, when you're in high school, who do you want to be? What do you want to do? You may not know, and that's fine, but, but, you know, having a journal, uh, is really productive, particularly with, with, I think high school kids today, you know, when I was, when I was in high school, we didn't have social media yet. We were just, you know, we were just getting to a point where we were having, you know, having cell phones, um, makes me feel very old, uh, but <laughs> You know, now with, with you know, everything at, at, at your fingertips as a high school student, taking the time, putting the phone away, getting an actual, you know, journal out with an actual pen and writing down, I think that is very uh, helpful with, to high school students today. Yeah, it, for, it definitely is, I think, um, just because I think a lot of people in high school are always just on their phone, always wanting to be busy, always wanting to just be doing something um and so it's definitely nice to sit down and even like writing in a planner for me is something that helps me like set my goals for the week and so that's a good tip for sure for high school students um so you're obviously extremely busy um being lieutenant governor so how do you stay productive even when you have a lot of things on your plate so I, it again i i I kind of point back to when it, when, it, when it comes to my job and being productive, again, I do have a staff. I've got a couple people uh, that help make sure uh, that, that we are staying uh, on tasks, on task and on time with, with, with uh, all the different things that we have to do. Um, I have a, a wife and a family that also keep me very grounded. Uh, that's priority number one for me. Uh, but, but really, you know, my staff, I have a chief of staff in my office that, that makes sure that, that um, you know, I'm not going, uh, uh, you know, down again, a, a rabbit trail somewhere that's not productive. And so you have to have a team around you uh, for sure at, at, at my level. But I would say, you know, anybody, even in high school, just having one or two friends that, you know, accountability partners in some ways that, that can make sure that you are uh, staying productive or you're not doing something that you shouldn't be doing. If you don't have that, then yeah, you can make some, some bad decisions and uh, we're not always going to make all the right decisions. And, and we're, there's going to be, we're going to learn from mistakes, but having one or two people that you can lean on uh, is a really big deal. And, and for me, I have friends that keep me accountable, but I have a staff that keeps me on task. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's a really good piece of advice for sure. Um, so what would you say to high school students listening, maybe some other people, is the best way to implement passion or not passion, productivity into their leadership? You know, I, I think one of the things that I always tell high school students, and this is tough, you know, in, in today's world is, is not, not believing the lie that you have to be loved by everybody uh, or that everybody has to like you. Um, you know, there, there's a great movie, The Greatest Showman, uh, it's just an amazing movie. There's some really great learning life, life lessons from that movie. But I remember that, you know, the wife in that movie, you know, tells, um, uh, you know, the main character, Hey, you, you don't have to be loved by everybody. Just a couple people is enough. And if you go, if you get consumed with wanting to be loved by everybody, then you're not going to be productive because you're going to try to, uh, you know, um, 
keep every single one of those people happy uh, or do everything that you, you can't do it. it it's impossible to uh, keep everybody happy. And if, and if you try to do that, then you're not going to ever stand for anything. Uh, so I, I would, I would make sure that, you know, yeah, have, you know, it, it, one friend, two friends, uh, but, but to, to try to be loved by your entire senior class um, or, or you try to do that with going into college, it's not going to work and you're not going to be productive. Uh, and, and that's something that, again, if I could go back in time, I, I would tell myself that as well. Being in elected office, you want people to vote for you. Uh, of course you do. Uh, but, but not everybody's going to vote for you. Uh, and, and so I, I think that's been something that I've continually ha- I've had to learn and get better at. Uh, that, listen, you're going to stand for things, and some people are going to like that, and some people aren't. Uh, but at least you're standing for something, uh, and, and a lot of people in this world today don't. Yeah, that's that's good. That's really good because um, I know, like, if you end up just wanting all these other people to um, love you and you're trying to gain the attention and the love from everyone else, you're going to keep your, like, get your eye off of the ball of what you're trying to accomplish. Yep. So that's really good. So last two questions. What is one, uh, what is the best piece of advice about leadership that you have gotten? Mm. Uh, You know, servant leadership for me, I think a a leader, uh, they they certainly, they lead from the front during crisis, uh, but during the good times and and all the wins, when the winds start piling up and the successes, you kind of lead from the back and that's a servant leader. Uh, and so servant leadership, I think true leaders, servant always goes in front of the word leader. Uh, and I, I think that is something that everybody has to learn. You can learn that. Uh, but, but servant leadership for me is something that I've always, I've, I've read a lot of books about it. I've tried to lead that way uh, that you, you do. You want to be a servant. Uh, and, and when times are tough, you want to lead from the front. Uh, but but. You want uh, your staff and, and uh, those that are on your team to get a lot of the credit uh, when things are good, uh, because that helps build morale uh, in an office or, or uh, you know, student council for that matter. So th- that is some of the best I- advice that I've got is that, hey, when you talk about leadership, stop for a second, because it's not leadership we're talking about, in my opinion, it's servant leadership, because servants uh, and, and those that serve others are the leaders in this country. And, you know, the people that are, that are helping others in America today or around the world for that matter, uh, those are the people that, that are helping change the world too. Uh, you know, look, look for the helpers. Uh, the, the helpers are the ones that at the, uh, when, when, when things are tough and, and when we're down, it's the helpers they're going to lead us out. Uh, and, and those, those aren't just helpers. They're not just servants. Those are leaders. Yeah. That's, that's a really good piece of advice. Okay. So last question, what is one piece of advice that you would give to a high school student today? Uh, you know, I, I would, I would always tell high school students, you know, we've talked about certainly a few of those things that I would tell high school students, but you know, as you're preparing to go do the next thing, you know, I mean, it, it, I, I would make sure to my senior year in high school, I still remember it's still one of the best, the best times of my life. Enjoy your junior and senior years, the, those, those years in high school uh, when you're about to graduate. And I really feel for high school students today with COVID, um, you know, it really is, is a gut punch to me, you know, because I mean, the, the, that senior year to me was such a transformational year for me. Enjoy those years because it, it, it very well be maybe some of the, the best times of your life in a lot of ways. Um, but, but I would make sure that you're thinking when you graduate, when you cr- walk across that stage and get that diploma, that you have some sort of plan. Uh, and, it, and the plan may not be college. It may be uh, one of our, going to one of our great career tech uh, campuses around the state. It may be you know, going overseas for a year. It may be, you know, uh, again, volunteering for an organization uh, somewhere. But I, 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 it was one of the things that I wish I had done a little bit better was, was stopping, again, as, as we've kind of talked about through this podcast, and just journaling out a little bit where I want to be, where do I want to go. Uh, your parents are going to be in your ear telling you a lot of things, uh, and, and it 
very well may be a lot, very good advice. Listen to your family, of course, but, but you should take some time to write down what are, what are your goals? What are your passions? What do you, what do you love doing? Uh, and then trying to connect that dot to what that next step needs to be. Um, you know, that, that's, I, I think, some advice that um, I got when I started getting into college uh, and for sure graduating from college that really um, helped me be a couple steps ahead of some other people. And working hard. You know, if you work hard, that's probably the last thing that I would say. You know, you can pass a whole lot of people in life if you work hard. Uh, because unfortunately, uh, in today's world, it, you do have um, a lot of people that just aren't prepared to work hard. They won't work hard. But if you wake up earlier, you stay out later, um, and, and you're bold uh, about asking people for advice and, and, and working with other people, it, it really can separate you uh, from the rest of the crowd. And, and that's what's great about student council is you actually create and develop social skills that, that a lot, unfortunately, in this country today, uh, and with the because of social media, it, you just have a generation that, that doesn't have uh, social skills like previous generations or work or, or kind of really the, those work skills that really that greatest generation had. I hope they prove me wrong, and I want them to prove me wrong. Uh, but those are skills that you learn in student council or FFA or 4-H that I think are so critical. So work hard. And I'm telling you, amazing things can happen if you just work hard. That's so good. That's um, the perfect way to end this podcast. Um, I know I got a lot of, about, I learned a lot about productivity from this and I'm going to take a lot of things away from this. So I just want to thank you again for coming on here. We know you're busy and we're just like so thankful that you came on our podcast and I think it's going to help a lot of people. Well, Macy, thank you so much for reaching out. And uh, my, my lieutenant governor office is always open for, for folks that want to talk more. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Macy. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to tune in our next episode.